taking a look at another one of the B&M exclusive 2018 collector sets today. So today we're going to be taking a look at the 12th Doctor collector figure set, the first of three releases this year from the three-pack action figure line. Now this is a rather unusual set because for the first time ever in the B&M re-release line, we in fact get a figure that isn't a re-release whatsoever. It is in fact the action figure of Bill Potts alongside the 12th Doctor and Missy. Now I do believe that there is going to be another variant of Bill Potts coming out later this year and it will be released on Amazon sometime, I do believe, so we just need to wait for that to happen. But for now, this is technically the debut of the Bill Potts figure. Previously, I have already reviewed the third Doctor and TARDIS. That review is already out, so go and check that out if you are interested in that product. But for now, we're basically back to what is normally released, being three action figures in a box for $16.99, some of which contain some rather unusual repaints. Once again, in your 5.5 collector series design, so as you can see at the very top, do get 5.5 slash 14 centimeter scale collector series. The classic Doctor Who logo at the very bottom there, which is rather nice and bold, and we get the 12th Doctor collector figure set. Includes the 12th Doctor, Missy, and Bill Potts with the character options logo at the bottom. Nothing really exciting at the top, just the Doctor Who logo and the character options logo. Then we get some company information at the bottom along with the contents of the set. Taking a look at the sides of the box, we just get the Doctor Who logo once again, along with figure pictures of the Missy figure and the 12th Doctor and then on the opposite side we once again get the 12th Doctor and Bill Potts and then on the back we just get some images once again of the figures on the inside of the box in this rather nice sort of star field design however much like the previous B&M exclusive collector sets we don't get any write-ups on the figures I feel like if they made the images a little bit smaller along with the titles and actually said what episode they're there from and then a little bio about each character it would just make it look a little bit nicer and a bit more professional because I think that having these bland back of boxes just makes it look almost a bit knockoff so it would have been nice maybe to have some text on there just to make it a bit more exciting of course on the front of the box you do get the preview window that really nicely displays all the figures along with this rather nice vortex diamond design backdrop as per usual we have the 12th Doctor Collector figure set out the box. Now, first off, to start off with, taking a look at what episodes these figure variants are apparently from. So, Missy is from the Series 10 episode Extremis, which is, of course, a part of the Mummy trilogy that we had. Then we have the 12th Doctor in his red velvet jacket, apparently from the Series 9 story Face the Raven. And then Bill is from the Series 10 episode The Pilot. And I do believe that it's taken from that moment near the very beginning where she first goes to see the Doctor in his study. Of course, the actual sculpt of this figure is apparently based off the costume as seen in Smile, where this is a rather unusual set and unfortunately has exactly the same flaws really as any other B&M set, trying to be something of a figure variant that it obviously isn't. Much the basic sculpts of previous releases and then essentially painted a costume over the top, making for a number of inaccuracies. But still, if you're somebody that hasn't picked up the previous Missy figures or the 12th Doctor and of course wants a Bill Potts figure, then this set is an absolute bargain for you because it is only only $16.99 as compared to around £12 per figure. So firstly, I'm going to be taking a look at the Missy figure from the episode Extremis. Now, I would have started off with the 12th Doctor since he is the Doctor of the set. However, I just want to get this Missy action figure out of the way, to be honest, because we're only a few minutes into the review and it's already really, really annoying me because it literally doesn't stand up whatsoever. Virtually right out of shot right now filming this review, I'm needing to use a coaster to make the figure even stand up because it's just so unstable and doesn't work whatsoever. I think my other previous Missy figures are also like it. It's just something with using high heels on action figures and character options and their lack in decent leg articulation, which makes these incredibly hard to stand up. So yeah, it's not exactly the best thing to start off with, but that said, the figure does actually look pretty nice. If you're one of those people that in fact bought the variant of Missy from the Series 9 releases that was in fact a random one that got thrown out there that was a slightly different colour to the Series 8 versions of Missy, then this is virtually just like that figure with a few changes here and there. But taking a closer look at the costume, to be honest, if you're somebody that got the purple edition of Missy originally, then this is exactly the same sculpt to this, just by using a few different revised paint apps here and there. So starting off at the very top, we do have the lapels of the jacket that have been really nicely sculpted to in fact stand out from the dress itself. Piping design that runs all the way around this to make it stand out quite a lot. This also runs around to the back as well, where we do have a few creases here and there along with the stitching lines of the actual coat 
sculpt itself. The ones have been rather nicely sculpted onto the design, making them once again protrude from the actual sculpt, making them stand out quite a lot. And then we have the piping design that also runs around the rest of the jacket. Now, this is in fact using a black paint app, which when I seen these in store, a few of them did look quite iffy. So I do urge you when you pick this setup to in fact really check over all of the figures that are in fact released this year, not just this one, because there are a few paint leaks here and there. And the quality control, to be honest, doesn't really seem to be very good. So you also have this trim that runs all the way up the back of the jacket itself, once again with that piping design once again recreated. You also have a few of the pockets as well on either side there, which once again have been painted and applied in exactly the same way as the trim running around the coat with a few ruffles in there as well. The arms of the figure once again continue the same dress design, as you can see painted in exactly the same purple. And we do also have a few creases in there as well to really nicely recreate the fabric as seen on the actual costume. And then we do also have the cuffs of the jacket, which once again have a little bit of piping on using a black paint app to really nicely make those stand out and then on the very bottom we do also have the cuffs of the coat itself with a few buttons really nicely painted on there as well and then exactly the same goes for the opposite side this time as opposed to having normal skin tone hands missy has in fact got these rather nice purple gloves on which once again follow exactly the same sculpt to the other releases they've just painted them in another color so the first hand is in fact sculpted in an open palm position and much like the previous missy releases for some reason they seem to be incredibly small i get that she's a female character so they are meant to be just generally a little bit smaller in build but her hands do seem to be really dainty and tiny and when I say tiny I mean tiny they just seem to be a little bit out of proportion which is a little bit odd and the opposite hand has once again been painted in that rather nice plum purple color however the actual sculpt itself is in almost a little bit of a grasping position to in fact hold her umbrella or little communicator thing that came with the previous releases however due to this being a B&M budget set she doesn't have any of those accessories whatsoever which to be honest may not exactly be any problem because my other previous releases actually struggle holding the accessories anywhere an attempt to make this look at least mildly what is seen in the actual story this time around they have in fact changed the middle section of the figure just under the collar that's been painted in a white we do in fact have a rather nice burgundy almost scarf section which does have a little bit of patterning here and there on that including a few buttons as well however once again this is simply just painted over the original sculpt that would have normally just been a white blouse underneath but that is still a nice little change the dress has been painted in exactly the same color as the rest of the costume being this rather nice vibrant purple and much like the previous Missy releases. We do in fact have a few creases here and there as well to replicate the fabric as seen within the costume in the series. On the side, we do get this rather odd black line that has been printed onto the side of the dress. This isn't on my other two Series 8 Missy figures, so I'm presuming once again this is something that occurred on the Series 10 dress seen in Extremis. To end off with on the costume, we do also have the high heels there at the very bottom that have been sculpted rather nicely with a few creases and wrinkles once again in there in the material, and we do also have the laces sculpted onto the front, of course, as the heel at the back. And what is also nice to see is we do in fact have the sole light sort of peachy colour that has been printed onto the very bottom there as well along with a little bit of company information. So yeah, those are nice. It's just a shame that because of them, the figure literally doesn't stand up whatsoever. Likeness to Michelle Gomez on this figure is once again a similar situation to the previous Missy figure releases where it wasn't necessarily correct in the first place. Therefore, no matter how many times you re-release it, it is still going to have the same flaws in there even if you throw an absolute ton of paint on it. So much like the 12th Doctor figure, for some reason aging seems to have gone completely out of the window. The face doesn't have any wrinkles on or any aging. Instead, she looks around 20 just with a lot of makeup on as opposed to Michelle Gomez's actual age. The sculpt is the non-hatted version seen originally on the black dress version of Missy, therefore she is sporting that very manic grin, so she's smiling quite a lot. We do have a few little wrinkles around the face to recreate that expression. What is nice to see is they've changed the colour of the lips from the original Reverend Red to a more sort of normal skin tone, being a pinkish colour, and we do also have the lighter white teeth in there as well, looking rather natural. The eyes, which once again have in fact been painted rather well, they do seem to be a little bit more bolder from the original version we have eyeshadow it does seem to be incredibly exaggerated as you can see we do have this odd sort of bluey green color that has been added around the top of the eye there which i get what they're trying to do with it but it does look a little bit too vibrant from what is seen in the actual series it's still quite cool though however and something of which that doesn't appear on the previous releases and eyebrows as well that have simply been painted on using a black line to recreate the eyebrow makeup seen within the series so yeah once again it's kind of okay kind of the more that you look at it the more that you see Michelle Gomez but there's still just something about it 
that looks a little bit odd. And the application on the hair also varies a little bit from the original version. It does seem to be a little bit more of a vibrant brown colour as opposed to the more matte colour on the original version. And we do also have a few black paint taps in there as well that have been painted into the curls, which is rather nice, giving them a little bit more detail. This is especially more so relevant around the back there with a few creases and things in there and also a few curls. However, once again, because this is a re-released figure, the hairstyle is in fact nothing like what is seen in Extremis. It is a lot more wild and a lot longer as well. Talking about articulation, because it's not really very exciting, we'll get the knee articulation that moves from side to side. However, that is irrelevant because we do have the dress on there. We do also have 360 at the thigh. You could have 360 at the waist as well. And then we do also have a ball joint at the arm. That means it can move out to the side a little bit, but can also move out to the front as well. We do have that upper arm articulation. And then oddly, we do also have a ball joint at the elbow as well, which is a rather new addition. 360 at the wrist. And then we do also have 360 at the top of the head as well. So in comparison now to the other Missy figures in my collection, you literally will not understand how difficult this take has been to film without one of these figures falling over. So very, very quickly, virtually they all have different flaws, but also at the same time, they all look pretty cool. I think generally the costume is rather impressive, and I really do like the hatted version. I think that that one especially really nicely sets off the character of Missy, and I think that generally it looks a little bit better. But that said, the latest edition is still quite nice. I do like the purple on there, and also the slight additions to the upper half of the figure, where we have that underneath blouse. It is that rather nice orangey colour. And then also the hair and the detailing on the face is also quite nice. The likeness does stand out a little bit more, especially with the eyeshadow in there as well. But naturally, if you got the other releases, this one isn't necessarily that special. And next up, we have the 12th Doctor, apparently from Series 9's Face the Raven, of course, in his red velvet jacket, which I think is a figure that we all knew would happen at some point, because virtually all they would have needed to do was paint up the Series 8 version, and that is exactly what they've done. I'm kind of just happy to have a figure like this, regardless of its inaccuracies, because it is nice to have a 12th Doctor figure that isn't just a full-on black coat. It makes it stand out a little bit more, and also to make this figure just a little bit more accurate and a bit more different. They have also used the more later edition of the longer-haired version of the 12th Doctor that was released, I do believe, a year or so ago now, which I suppose is a good change. At least it makes it look a little bit more like what was seen in the story. You can probably all tell, judging by this angle, what I'm about to say in a second. The 12th Doctor doesn't have a waistcoat, much like every other 12th Doctor release that we've ever seen. And this is getting incredibly annoying now, especially since the Talons of Wang Chiang 4th Doctor has a little bit of a retool on there. They could have at least just painted it on to the actual shirt. I would have even accepted that. At least they would have tried then, just to make it look a little bit more like what is seen in the story. But instead, we get a bland white shirt with a few creases on there and also a few buttons running up the front, along with the collar at the very top, which given is in fact a rather nice sculpt. But still, absolutely no waistcoat whatsoever which makes this figure just look a little bit more blander than what it should be we have the rather nice looking red velvet jacket which as i was saying is basically the series 8 figure just repainted so naturally you do have a few details on this including the buttons running along the front and also the button holes at the opposite side you also have the sculpt there of the collar as well that has been rather nicely engraved into the actual plastic and then other than that it has just been painted in this rather nice looking red color unfortunately much like the other 12 doctor figures do have that rather unusual usual factory error in there as well, that rather odd scrape which is virtually on every single release. And then we do also have a few creases running along the side as well, including the pockets that are on the very side of the costume. Which running along the side, you have the shirt underneath rather nicely poking out there with a little bit of a white trim. And then we do also have the sculpt of some buttons running along the cuffs of the jacket as well. And much like the previous releases, the hands have just been sculpted in an open palm position, along with the paint up set of the gold ring rather nicely painted on. And then on the opposite side, do you have the sculpting of the sonic screwdriver holding hand however as this is a B&M set once again this figure doesn't come with any accessories which is a shame much like a third doctor figure set it can't really cost much to in fact just a package a sonic screwdriver in there it is just a small bit of plastic and it would have set this figure off just a little bit better especially when compared to the other releases but yeah that is a little bit of a shame and then of course at the very front of the shirt as well we do get the belt that's been rather nicely painted on along with a little bit of a silver paint tapper in there as well applicate the buckle 
sculpting of the trousers is once again exactly the same to the Series 8 version. Do have a few creases and wrinkles in that as well to replicate the rather baggy looking trousers. However, unlike the other versions of the 12th Doctor figure, this seemed to have gone with a rather sort of glossy blue design when it comes to the trousers, which I've been looking at some images from the 12th Doctor from Face the Raven, and the trousers in fact seem to be a very darkish colour, more so on the black side as opposed to blue. So yeah, I don't really know what's going on there, but that's just something I'm not going to bother questioning them on it. They're rather impressive sculpt as you can see we have the different stipple designs of there of the different sections of shoe rather nicely tailored together along with a rather nice paint tap of that lighter brown color at the very bottom to replicate the sole and we do also have the sculpting of the laces at the very front and then at the very back we do also have the tab poking out there as well more so like the uh, later version of the 12th doctor figure that was released with the hoodie this two peter capaldi now once again has exactly the same flaws to the other 12th doctor figures and much like the missy figure as well as i was saying earlier where it basically doesn't have any aging whatsoever and he's once again sporting that rather miserable looking face much like every 12th doctor that for some reason they seem to be incredibly passionate on in fact presenting the 12th doctor to have this rather angry looking face he looks like that he's just been told some really bad news however something that is good with the likeness is we do have a few upgraded paint apps in there so to start off with the lips have been painted in a rather sort of neutral color that does seem to be a little bit better compared to the previous releases and then we do also have the eyes in there as well which once again seem to be a little bit sharper from the previous ones like the series 9 version of the 12th doctor that has the hoodie this time around the blue and the eye doesn't seem to stand out as much as that one which is rather good as it seemed to stand out a little bit too much on the other version be happy at the way that the hair has been painted on this release once again a little bit of a step up from the previous 12th doctor figures is almost a little bit of a middle ground between the two because it does seem to have a very gray highlight in there it's certainly a lot more prominent than the series 9 hoodie version of the 12th doctor as that one did seem to be very very dark indeed however we do have a really nice mixture of dark paint taps in there with a few lighter highlights applied over the top and this is the same for the very top of the hair as well as you can see moving around to the back we do have a lot of curls in there and does look generally a bit more like the 12th doctor as seen within the actual story so to be honest i might go as far to say that this might be the best 12th doctor hair that i've actually seen so far on a character options figure comparing the 12th doctor red velvet action figure now to the other 12th doctor figures that have been released i've just got a few of them from my shelf not all of them that i have but yeah just a few different variations to show off the differences i actually think that this 12th doctor figure might be my favorite of them all because i just think that it has something that makes it stand out a lot more than the other releases and it's probably because all the other ones have a very dark color palette of course that doesn't change the issues with this figure it is naturally still incredibly inaccurate of course it doesn't have the waistcoat in there much like a load of the other releases as well which is incredibly annoying but that said it is still nice to have a version of the 12th doctor that is kind of from his last part of his era because i guess you could also pass this off as a figure seen within season 10 as well if you pause it with the new version of the sonic screwdriver so yeah a rather nice figure uh, but at the same time it does have those inaccuracies on there but if you're just looking for a 12th doctor figure that looks cool to add to your shelf then this is definitely a really nice variation the final figure of this set is of course Miss Bill Potts as portrayed by Pearl Mackey throughout Doctor Who Series 10. Now this is a very exciting figure as I was saying early on in this review. It is in fact the first ever time that we've got a Bill figure. We've got another one coming out later this year which I presume it was probably meant to be released before this one was because this is technically a re-release before the original has even been released which is a very unusual idea. But yeah I'm quite surprised that we've in fact got a Bill figure to be honest because I thought that we wouldn't get one in the 5.5 scale and that said we don't even have a proper Clara figure yet and to be honest we probably never will but it'd be nice to have a hide version of Clara because that is the more iconic costume I think but yeah this Bill figure is in fact a rather nice addition to add to the collection and it is of course her costume apparently as seen briefly throughout the pilot however the actual sculpt itself is of course the one as seen in Smile. Taking a closer look at the costume now, to be honest, I think that this is a rather unusual design choice. I thought that they would have gone with the rather retro looking denim jacket with all the different badges on because I think that that is generally a more iconic costume and the one that we kind of seen Bill wear through the majority of the promotional material. Or the shirt itself has been rather nicely done. We do have a mixture of different stripes in there. Of course, we have the white undercoat in there, but we also have the orange stripes, the black ones, the brown ones, and also a little bit of red in there as well. However, unfortunately, this doesn't really seem to be quite well done, as you can see around 
the sides here. We do get lots of different splodges and scrapes and smudges, unfortunately, something of which that really makes the design look quite messy. And to be honest, I've not seen any Bill Potts figure that doesn't have this issue on. So it will be really nice to see on the upcoming Singular Ace version on the Smile variant if they've in fact cleaned this up a little bit. I am expecting it to be a lot sharper in design, considering that the pattern on that shirt is in fact a lot more simple compared to this one. The back, we do have a few creases in there as well, along with a little bit more of a tighter design of those stripes. And then also along the top as well, we also get a bigger section of black and white stripes in there with a few more creases added in there too. So yeah, that is rather nice, quite eye-catching as well, and does represent Bill's rather colourful character. The rest of the main body section has been rather nicely painted. As you can see, the arms have just got their natural skin tone on there, and both of the hands have been posed in a natural open palm position, as she doesn't really have any accessories to hold. And then we just have a little bit of skin around the back as well, nothing really too much to talk about, but still it looks quite natural. I do like the way that we even have the upper bone structure in here as well. It has been rather nicely brought out with a bit of sculpting, which once again is rather sharp. I'm quite impressed with that. And the figure now to the jeans at the very bottom. We do have a rather nice design on these once again. So starting off at the very top, we do have the sculpting of the different buttons in there along with the different sections of jeans as well. I do really like the way that we even have the belt buckles along the very side, rather nicely sculpted to be protruding from the actual trousers themselves. Along the very back, we do have a little bit of scrubbing in there as well, a little bit of a light blue design, which rather nicely makes them actually look like jeans. And we do also have the sculpting of the pockets in there as well, along with a few creases along the upper half of the leg. Moving down from this, once again, we get a few bits of scrubbing here and there, nothing too much, which doesn't really make it stand out. Once again, it looks rather natural. And then also around the side, you do get the sculpting of the other side pockets in there as well. At the very bottom of the skin tight trousers, you do in fact get creases around the knee section, much like how you would have on skinny jeans in real life. And then at the very bottom, we do have a little bit of wrinkling material where the trousers have been tucked into the shoes. Shoes have in fact been sculpted rather well. As you can see, these have been generally painted in a rather mint green looking colour. And then also along the top of this, we get this really nice brush stroke of a rather nice bright white where all the laces have been really nicely sculpted on. I love the way that the actual shoes are in fact wrapped around the legs. And we do have a little bit of the jeans exposed in there as well, as it does actually make it look like that she is wearing them. And I also love the actual variation in the design. As you can see, we, do, we don't actually have the tongue of the shoe peeping out here. But on this side, we do in fact have the piece of the shoe actually floating towards one side. Once again, much like how Bill had it in the actual show. Also a little bit of varying of the laces as well. And we do also have a brush stroke in there of a little bit of a dirty texture. Once again, making them look battered and worn, much like how they were in series 10. And the likeness to Pearl Mackey on this figure is in fact rather impressive. I think that they've done a very good job. Of course, you can quite obviously tell it's Bill. I think that the massive afro hair really gives that away. I'm glad that they've gone with the more iconic wild hair as opposed to when it was tied back on a few occasions throughout series 10 and generally the actual likeness itself is also really impressive. I think that the sculpt is really good and quite accurate. I love the way that we've got the eyebrows painted along the top in a rather thick black section and then also the way that these have been pointed to almost look a little bit concerned or judgmental which is once again quite reflective of Bill's character. The way that the eyes have been sculpted are also quite impressive. I like the way they've got the eye bags around the side once again so really nice definition to these. Sharp pen taps of the way that we've got the eye whites and the iris in there as well along with the upper section of the eye which has a little bit of black running along the top to maybe represent the eyelids. Moving down from there we do also have the lips which have been painted in a rather natural pink colour. Once again could suggest that she's wearing a little bit of makeup however not too much not too extravagant as say Missy or anything like that. To the side profile of the face now I think that once again the structure of this is really like Pearl Mackey. You can quite obviously tell that it's her and I think that it's no coincidence that the one figure in this set that actually has a really impressive likeness is the one that is the most youngest and the two that are not so impressive are the ones of the older characters. I think that character options for some reason are just struggling with the older people and when it comes to the more younger people in Doctor Who they in fact do a very good job indeed. Worth crediting the way the hair actually connects to the head I think that it may in fact be one whole piece. I can't really tell which I suppose is a good thing but also of you that are interested I do believe that the bow has exactly the same paint apps to the upcoming smile version of Bill. This has just been painted rather nicely in a rather nice orange colour. We do also have a few flecks in there as well from what I can see but I can't tell if these are basically just bits of paint flaking off or they're actually meant to be on there but that is generally a rather nice sculpt and does look very much like a bow and I do love the way it actually sits on the hair. It gives a really nice amount of colour to that. Finally taking a look at the hair I do think that this is in fact a really impressive sculpt. I think that they've really got it spot on. I imagine that especially when on rotation taking a look at the back there we do have lots of different crevices and I imagine that this will be incredibly hard to dust if you get any dust in there because we do have lots of different gaps and things. Generally the 
actual hair itself has been painted in a very dark colour and then we do almost have a brown varnish that has been applied to the top of this just to give it a little bit more of a shimmer which is rather nice and does make it look very much like hair. And for the articulation of the bill figure now to be honest it is in fact quite simplistic and I expected a little bit more especially having ball joints at the shoulders that is something that I expected to have considering that the Missy figure and the other recent Doctor Who figures do in fact have them. So starting off at the top of the 360 the head that turns incredibly easily then we have the 360 at the arms but this is in fact quite hindered by the hair design and then we do also have the upper arm articulation in there as well and also bend at the elbow we do also have the 360 at the waist and the t crotch joint meaning that it can move out and also to the sides as well so she can do the splits and then we do also have the bend at the knee and also rotation 360 at the boot as well so yeah a very nice figure for articulation but still rather basic it would be nice to maybe have a few ball joints in there just to make it a bit more like up to date figures and to finish off with the bill potts figure of course there is no other variation of the bill figure as of yet that i can in fact compare this figure to so it is a brand new one to add to the collection so instead that i'm going to in fact display bill alongside the 12th doctor released in this set along with the 12th doctor's tardis as well the previously released 5.5 collector series version and it is so nice to finally have another doctor companion relationship to add to the collection because thinking back it has actually been so so long I overall for the doctor who b&m exclusive 2018 12th doctor collector figure set i think that for the recommended retail much like every other b&m three pack this set is an absolute bargain because you essentially get three brand new variants of figure and this set in particular is rather special because it is the first ever b&m collector set to in fact feature a brand new release because we are still yet to see the new version of the bill potts figure to be released the single one and even then the recommended retail of that is probably going to be around 10 pounds to 12 pounds something like that so therefore for only a few pounds more you are essentially getting a whole two extra figures yes fair enough both of them do have flaws the 12th doctor does have exactly the same flaws to the original 12th Doctor figure. It is too tall, it's not in scale with all the other ones, and the actual sculpt itself is not accurate to what it is meant to be. Of course, being the Doctor from Face the Raven, it doesn't have the waist coat, much like every 12th Doctor figure. The coat itself is probably a different sculpt entirely in the actual show, and it's sort of the likeness to the 12th Doctor does seem to be a little bit off. It lacks in aging, and also it still has that miserable face, much like the majority of the 12th Doctor figures. But that said, at the same time, it it still looks cool. It stands out a lot on the shelf, especially when compared to the other 12th Doctor figures, normally being a very dark grey or dark blackish colour when it comes to the coat. And the hair itself is also a rather nice change. Being a lighter grey, it stands out a lot more and does look a little bit more impressive on the shelf. For the Missy figure, it's a little bit of a dud, to be quite honest. I'm probably one of the least sturdiest figures that I've ever reviewed in the history of this channel. Right now, to even film this segment, I'm in fact needing to have something propped up behind it to even make the figure stand up. It's something of which that the previous figures of Missy did in fact suffer from. They were also quite bad at standing, but nothing on this scale. Literally, I don't think I've even got this figure to stand up by itself yet. I don't know if it's just an issue with mine or just generally an issue with all of them, but for me, this figure is just incredibly weak and needs a lot more support. But that said, the actual detailing on the costume is nothing too special. It's very similar to the other editions of Missy, and the likeness on the face also could do with quite a lot of improvement especially the makeup itself is rather over exaggerated and does look quite unusual but it can't really be helped considering the original version was also quite exaggerated the pots figure is very very good indeed i think that generally the quality is quite nice it looks a lot like pearl mackie it is just a shame that the costume is in fact a little bit messy especially when it comes to the striped shirt on top that is very messy indeed and has a lot of smudges on and isn't really what i expect from a doctor who action figure i think that the more expensive singular version that will be out soon will hopefully have a lot higher detail and it will be interesting to see how that figure varies from this release. If you're a casual Doctor Who fan that essentially wants a TARDIS team for your collection along with an additional Missy figure then this is definitely a set for you and if you're somebody that is a Doctor Who figure collector then this is also a nice set to get a new version of the 12th Doctor that looks different to all the others and also finally a Bill Potts figure to add to the collection. So yeah generally overall a very nice set and something of which I definitely recommend recommend going to the store to have a look at to see if you can find one that has decent paint apps and quality control. Thank you very much for watching this review and I will see you all in more Doctor Who content in the near future along with further reviews of the other B&M collector sets released this year. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.